Throughout the southwestern United States and northern Mexico roams a hairy beast that evolved over millions of years and honed their skills to become an apex predator of the desert. This terrifying night stalker of the desert would be more accurately described as the gentle giant spider of the Arizona desert. The Afonapelma calcotes, known more commonly as the Arizona blonde or the desert blonde tarantula, spends its entire life in the hot, arid, unforgiving environment of the Sonoran Desert and surrounding areas. With daytime temperatures often exceeding 104 degrees Fahrenheit or 40 degrees Celsius, nightfall can cause temperatures to dip as low as 50 degrees Fahrenheit or 10 degrees Celsius. And though they live in a desert, it is not free of rainfall, with moderate rains coming in December and January, and violent summer thunderstorms during the monsoon season around July and August. This creates a uniquely difficult environment for any living thing to survive. But nature always finds a way, with at least 60 species of mammals, more than 350 species of birds, 20 species of amphibians, over 100 species of reptiles, and a yet to be fully counted or even discovered amount of invertebrates, including beetles, scorpions, spiders, and other insects and arachnids. Life has found a way to thrive in this seemingly inhospitable environment. For the Arizona blonde tarantula, life starts off as a struggle. Beginning life as an egg, they are one of hundreds of fertilized eggs kept safe in an egg sac, carefully woven and constantly protected by their mother. This existence is not as safe as it appears, because as the eggs develop, grow, and molt, cannibalism within the egg sac becomes common. The stronger and larger baby spiders begin feeding on the smaller, weaker ones, eventually growing strong enough to break free from the egg sac and emerge into the world. Troubles do not end there, as they need to quickly strike off on their own, leaving their brothers, sisters, and mother behind, or they risk possibly being eaten by any of them. This seems cruel, but it is actually a vital part of their life cycle ensuring the strongest of the broods survive to one day, hopefully, pass on their genes to a new generation, ensuring the survival of the species. Of the hundreds of eggs fertilized by the mother, only a small percentage of them will survive the first year of life. Having left behind their family, the spiderling strikes out to find a territory of their own somewhere that provides shelter from the bright sun, brutal heat, occasional rainfall, and a retreat to escape from any possible predators. Usually, shelter is found under dead branches, in abandoned burrows of small mammals or reptiles, or in the crevices of rocks. They will dig down and even seal up the entrance of the burrow using dirt and webbing, so it is nearly completely camouflaged. The burrow provides a dark, cool, and even slightly humid environment for the small tarantula, where it will spend the majority of its time, only emerging at night to sit at the mouth of the burrow, waiting patiently for prey to wander too close. But spending most of their time in their burrow, and rarely moving beyond the safety of their home, does not mean they are free from danger. The desert is literally crawling with predators, anxious to make these tiny tarantulas their next meal. From the Arizona bark scorpion, the giant desert hairy scorpion, to the striped-tailed devil scorpion, these are just a few of the dozens of species of scorpions hunting the desert floor for their next meal. Not to mention the desert centipede and many other predators venturing out every night to hunt. These spiderlings must be patient and cautious and not take any unnecessary risk if they are to survive long enough to grow into the intimidating tarantula they are destined to become. 
Unlike you and I and other mammals, tarantulas are invertebrates, meaning they have an exoskeleton, or their skeleton is on the outside. They grow a little bit each day within their hard outer shell until the pressure becomes too great and they are forced to molt or shed their old exoskeleton. This is a very vulnerable moment in the tarantula's life as their new exoskeleton is very soft and can take days to harden. So this process is usually done deep in their sealed burrows, far from the view of any would-be observers, in the safety and security of their dark lair. Since this species can live up to 25 to 30 years, growth from a spiderling to an adult can be very slow, taking years before they begin to reach a size where they resemble an adult tarantula. Many factors come into play when determining the rate at which they mature, as well as whether they are male or female, all play a role in the speed and development, making it difficult to lay out a specific timeline for growth. But the larger they grow, the more bold they become. Once they reach adulthood, they can grow to a respected size with a diagonal leg span of about five and a half to six inches or 15 centimeters. Females are covered in a light brown or blonde color setae that blends in nicely with their environment. Males look very similar most of their life, but as they reach maturity, they have much skinnier, longer legs with a smaller abdomen and usually the blonde color turns into dark browns or blacks on their legs and abdomen. Even as adults, these tarantulas do not hunt or stalk their prey. They are still opportunistic hunters, waiting for prey to come to them. They lay a thin layer of web around the entrance of their burrow, extending out a foot or two into the surrounding area, and lay in wait at the mouth of their burrow, motionless with their feet strategically placed on different strands of webbing. They have highly evolved, extremely sensitive receptors on the bottom of their feet. And using these in conjunction with their webbing, they have the ability to pinpoint exactly what and where their web has been disturbed, like hundreds or thousands of tripwires monitored simultaneously. Even though they have eight eyes that can see in front, behind, both sides, and above all at once, their eyesight is relatively poor. It is believed they can mainly only see motion and the contrasts of light and dark, which is very useful in detecting any predators attempting to sneak up behind them, or even in locating predatory birds or wasps that may try to attack from the sky. But when it comes to capturing prey, they rely mostly on their webbing, extremely sensitive receptors in their feet, and the highly sensitive setae found covering their legs and abdomen. These setae are similar to thousands of eardrums all over their body that are so sensitive they can detect the slightest movement of air molecules disturbed by an approaching animal. They can also sense chemotile changes in the air caused by the pheromones and scents emitted from other living beings in their vicinity. This influx of information is used to create a very detailed rendering of their immediate environment and enable them to quickly determine prey from predator and if they should pounce on a potential meal or flee from becoming something's next meal. The desert blonde tarantula is equipped with two large hollow fangs that inject a paralyzing venom into their prey, rendering them almost motionless. They then begin to use their fangs and pedipalps, or the two small appendages between their front two legs, to maneuver and crush their prey into a ball. Since they can only ingest liquid, the prey is chewed outside of the body, where the nutrients are liquefied and sucked into the body through their straw-like mouth, covered with hairs that act as a filter to keep out anything not liquefied. The tarantula will regurgitate digestive enzymes that cover their food bowl further breaking down and releasing any nutrients. And once the prey has been sucked dry of any usable nutrition, the undigestible leftovers are discarded as a bolus.
one meal can sustain an adult tarantula for weeks or even months, as they do not really breathe or use much energy unless they are moving. They can survive off sporadic meals for long periods of time, especially since most of their life is spent motionless in their burrows, usually not venturing more than 5 or 10 feet. Though this is not the case with the fully mature male of Fonapelma. Once they reach sexual maturity, they strike out into the unforgiving wilderness in search of a mate. They brave the extreme elements and voracious predators, traveling for miles in search of a female's burrow. While females can live over 25 years, males of this species are limited to only 8 to 10 years, meaning they grow and develop much quicker than females, which is possibly nature's way of discouraging breeding between spiders from the same sack and increasing the diversity of the gene pool. As large and scary as these tarantulas appear, their danger to humans is almost non-existent. These gentle giants of the invertebrate world would much rather run and hide from humans than defend themselves. They are not aggressive or dangerous, and the venom they possess is not deadly or really even strong enough to be harmful to humans. In fact, the pain from their fangs puncturing the skin would most likely be more painful than any venom that they inject. But tarantulas biting humans is very rare, and in most cases is a result of humans antagonizing the spider to the point they have no choice to bite to escape the perceived harm. At first, they will attempt to flee and escape any danger. The second line of defense is to kick urticating setae or hairs into the air that will lodge into the skin and create almost instant discomfort in the form of itching or even a slightly burning sensation. This is most effective against small mammals and reptiles. If these first few lines of defense fail to deter, then the tarantula will whip around, facing their foe head on, and give what is called a threat pose. They will stick their front four legs up into the air, rearing back to show their fangs, and appear even larger than they actually are. If all of these tactics do not work in deterring their aggressor, it is at this point they may feel they have no option for self-defense left than to deliver a bite. So it is apparent the intentional effort required and the ambivalence to the warning signs that it would take to actually be bitten by one of these creatures and why humans bitten by the Afonopelma calcotes are very rare. Even if one were to be bitten, the venom potency is so low that the only risk to your health would be from anaphylaxis or a rare allergic reaction to the venom or from an infection in the wound caused from not properly cleaning and bandaging which would be true of any cut one could receive. Even though they may appear to be monsters that haunt our dreams, the truth is the Arizona Blanche Tarantula is just a gentle giant of the arachnid world, a quiet, docile queen of the southwestern deserts, only to be feared by smaller insects, reptiles, and mammals, and respected by humans. They play a pivotal role in the ecosystem, keeping the numbers of annoying insects in check and balancing the rodent and reptile populations in the desert. Though they may appear scary, they are not just a vital part of this ecosystem, but a vital part of the planet as a whole, and should be shown our respect and appreciation. So if you see one of these gentle giants of the Sonoran Desert, leave them alone and appreciate their beauty from a distance. Live and let live and help maintain the delicate balance of life in this already unforgiving desert environment.